we have Mark uh, Damo at Duracis, who's going to um, kind of complement that presentation with a bit of an extension talking about CoExpress over fiber. So, Mark, the, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Greg. And uh, thank you very much, Patrick, for this uh, nice presentation of uh, CoExpress. So, we are going to talk about CoExpress over fiber. And, uh, well, it's not a mystery. <laughs> CoExpress over fiber is a way to extend CoExpress to use fiber optics. But as uh, I will show in this presentation, is that CoExpress over fiber is more than just that. Because of the way we have designed it. We have designed CoExpress over fiber as a way to run the CoExpress protocol as it is unmodified with all the advantages of CoExpress over a standard Ethernet connection. So Ethernet is actually the Ethernet network. So the, the RG45 network port that we have on our PCs, that becomes something else. We'll talk about this later at higher speeds. So Ethernet is the base for Gigi and for Gigi Vision uh, protocols. CoExpress over fiber uses standards electronics, chips, IP cores, connectors, and cables designed for Ethernet. But the protocol itself remains CoExpress, as it is, as I said, unchanged and modified, not Ethernet and not GigiVision. With CoExpress over fiber, we are keeping the advantages of CoExpress. So everything Patrick has talked about, um, I'm thinking about the, the triggering of the camera, sending data to the camera, the downward upstream channels, uh, the fact that we use a frame grabber to unload the PC, very low CPU, very low CPU load, all these advantages of CoExpress remain with CoExpress over fiber. In addition, we are going to benefit from the free, I would say the natural evolution of Ethernet towards higher bandwidth. We are going to benefit from low cost standard Ethernet components, such as the connectors and the cables. And we are going, and it's especially important, I would say for camera makers, also maybe a little bit for frame grabber makers. Uh, camera makers are going to benefit from common IP, I mean, common know-how, knowledge, common IP and components between CoExpress over fiber and Ethernet and GigiVision cameras. When I say we, it's, it's the community. Uh, Eurysis and Sensor to, him, to Image have uh, originally designed the CoExpress over fiber uh, standard, but it's now adopted by the CoExpress workgroup and uh, it has been approved as an addendum to the CoExpress standard by the GIA the Japanese Industrial Imaging Association at the beginning of this year. Of course, what we want to do is move towards fiber optics, which for high bandwidth application are much better than copper, than, uh, copper cables. With fiber optics, we will have access to higher, I would say virtually unlimited bandwidth, unlimited distance, so practically much longer cables with more bandwidth, and the less bulky and lighter cables will benefit from a complete immunity to electrical noise and a reduced power consumption. A drawback is that there's no such thing as power over fiber. You cannot transmit energy over the uh, no, uh, fiber optics, so, so we'll have to power the cameras uh, separately. Uh, I will continue the presentation with a little bit more theory, but just a couple of slides to explain how it works inside a camera or inside a receiver. Then we will see the, the first practical examples and applications of CoExpress over fiber products that we have today. So on the left here uh, of this diagram, we have a schematic block that shows how a camera on the top or a, a host uh, implementing CoExpress over fiber works. We have an IP core, that's the block in green here, CXP device IP core, which is the, the core that impl implements the CoExpress protocol inside the camera, inside the camera FPGA. 
data is transferred towards transceivers inside the FPGA that serialize the data and send them to the Coexpress interface, either from microchip or Macom. These are the two implementations we have today to inject data into the coaxial cable. With the Coexpress over fiber camera, uh, the, the, the IP core, the CXP, the Coexpress uh, core remains exactly the same. So the protocol is exactly the same. We are transferring data to a thin new layer that we call the, the CXP over fiber bridge, which is going to convert the data to make it understandable by the Ethernet core of the FPGA. And from there, we use a standard Ethernet connectors and, and interfaces to access the, the, the fiber optic. So this new layer here in, in the middle is also standardized part of the, the, the Coexpress standard. So we see the different standards involved here. Everything related to Coexpress is standardized by the GIA. Then uh, everything in blue there is uh, standardized by the IEEE. Everything related to Ethernet is standardized by the IEEE. And everything optical is uh, standardized by the SFF committee. So we are covered by uh, well-known international standards here with Coexpress over fiber. Uh, and if you are interested in developing products at URISIS and sensor to image, we, we sell these IP cores. So the, the CXP device IP core, the host IP core for Coexpress. And uh, we also have available the Coexpress over fiber bridge IP core that does the conversion between the, the, the parallel bus coming from the CXP device IP core and going towards the X, XGMI bus of the, the Ethernet PCS PMA interface. What is the current status of Coexpress over fiber today? Uh, we are working with several camera makers. Uh, and uh, to, to develop cameras and to make Coexpress over fiber a reality. Actually, I know I have seen four cameras uh, working so far. Uh, this camera is from uh, IOI, IO Industries. That's actually a photo that was taken at the Vision Show in Stuttgart last week. That's uh, an IOI Redwood 45 megapixel camera that uses a single fiber cable, that, the, the cable in purple color here. This cable replaces four CXP12 coaxial cables, uh, so in, in, a, in a single fiber cable assembly. Another example of a coexpress over fiber camera is from uh, Vision Research. That's, uh, that's a view from our lab here. That's an even higher end camera. The um, uh, coexpress CXP6 version used to use uh, 16 CXP6 connections, and they have replaced this by uh, two QSFP plus, so two fiber cable assemblies to connect the camera to two frame grabbers in this case. We are also working with uh, viewers in Korea and, uh, uh, and with CIS in Japan to develop cameras. And, uh, and we are talking to all camera makers and I hope uh, Optronist also very soon to develop uh, Coexpress over fiber cameras. On Eurysis side, we have for about one year now a frame grabber, which is called the Coaxlink USFP Plus. As you can see on this photo, it is a frame grabber with a QSFP Plus connector here. Uh, what does QSFP Plus mean? Actually, QSFP Plus means Quad SFP Plus or four times SFP Plus, and SFP means a small form factor pluggable module. That's a, a compact network interface module which is used for data communication, for example, Ethernet. It's used widely in, in data centers. With the QSFP Plus slot or cage on the frame grabber and on the cameras, the two camera examples that you have seen uh, in, in the previous slide also have a QSFP Plus slot, we can use a transceivers 
to transfer, to, to convert uh, optical data from the fiber into electrical data and vice versa. So at the, the bottom of the transceiver is the electrical connector. At the, the left of the transceiver here is the, the optical interface. Uh, it's covered by the, 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 the black, black cover here. And so the transceiver is inserted into the the QSFP plus slot of the frame rubber and on the camera. The clear advantages of this construction is that we can use different types of transceivers depending on the applications. With the QSFP plus transceiver modules, we have a bandwidth of 40 gigabit per second. This is exactly the same net bandwidth as we have with four CXP12 connections, so 40 gigabit per second. So this is where we stand today with uh, Coexpress over fiber over QSFP plus offering in a single fiber cable assembly 40 gigabit per second. But the clear interest of Coexpress over fiber is that this is opening a door towards much higher bandwidth. The QSFP28 standard is already available in the industry. At Eurysis, we are currently developing a coax, a coax link QSFP plus frame grabber, and QSFP 28 means four times 25 equals 100 gigabit per second in, in a single uh, cable. With QSFP 56, we will have two. 100 gigabit per second, and uh, the next standard is QSFP DD double data rate that will offer 400 gigabit per second. So we have a clear evolution with Coexpress over fiber, a clear evolution of the bandwidth towards 100, 200, and 400 gigabit per second with a single cable. What kind of optical transceiver can we use? There are mostly two kinds that are popular today and that we are using in real applications. The first one is an MTP-MPO connector that we see in the center for a multi-mode fiber. Multi-mode fiber and this kind of connector are, are, are the lowest cost solution and uh, the maximum fiber length is 150 meters. So no problem for all these applications in machines and, and, and so on. A second solution is a monomode fiber with an LC duplex connector that can go up to 40 kilometers. No change to the camera, no change to the frame grabber. You just use a different transceiver to have access to up to 40 kilometers of cable. So a lot of interesting applications for sport, video, for uh, remote uh, inspection and remote video. There are other options, so MPO and LC duplex are the top two here. There are also uh, breakout cables that can break the four connections of QSFP plus into four for four different cameras. There are also options uh, using copper, using a passive copper cable, active copper cable, and active optical cable that don't have uh, an, a specific connector for the fiber, but the fiber is goes directly into the transceiver. So all these options are compatible with Coexpress over fiber and uh, the, the QSFP plus transceivers. So in summary, a lot of fiber options, opening up bandwidth up to 200 and 400 gigabit per second. That's what we are getting with our Coexpress over fiber. Thank you. Brilliant, great presentation. Thank you very much, Mark, very thorough um, as, as always. Um, if you've got any questions for, for either Patrick or Mark or, or any of the speakers as we go along, then please do drop them in the, the Q&A box at the, in, on your screen and we'll try and get to them at the, at the end of the, all the presentations. Another technical question actually for Mark this time. Um, the question is, can the QSFP frame grabber you presented also be used as a four times 10 giggy vision frame grabber? Mark, do you uh, no, no, it cannot. Actually, that, okay. that's an interesting question for someone who followed the presentation because the, the hardware is exactly the same. As I explained, uh, we, the QSFP Plus interface is, is Ethernet. 
So um, uh, it cannot be used with Ethernet or GigiVision today because the, uh, the programming of the FPGA and the software, the drivers, do not support uh, Ethernet and GigiVision. The hardware is the same, but the software is different. That's something that could come in the future, although we do not have any immediate plan with, with the Coaxlink USFP Plus to support GigiVision. Uh, but that's something which could could come uh, with, with some products uh, in in the future. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I just wanted to ask, actually, maybe Patrick or maybe Mark or maybe Jack. I don't know. One of you. Um, what about other pieces in the kind of the puzzle, the lighting and the frame grabs? I guess Mark, you probably best to answer that. But um, are they keeping up with the speed of these of the sensors and the, and the interfaces? Um, well, I'm, I'm happy to see these new sensors coming. I mean, and, and uh, luckily, uh, GPXL is, is uh, before everyone because <laughs> camera makers need time to integrate the sensors, and then and then we 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 have uh, we need time to make the frame grabbers and, and develop the, the then we develop the complete solutions, and so, so that that that's a natural sequence. Uh, so I would say that yes, uh, everyone is is moving forward. I have shown in my presentation that with Core Express we move from uh, 50 to 100. It's where we stand today, and uh, we have a 100 gigabit per second with two Coax Link USFP Plus uh, uh, frame grabbers running in parallel, uh, and then we are moving uh, towards uh, 200 and then 400 in, in, in the future. So, so we we are ready with the new interfaces. Uh, we are ready for these new data rates. And uh, as we explained, there is a high demand. We, we have uh, questions from customers, from machine makers, because they have to inspect uh, smaller and smaller defects uh, at, at a higher uh, number of parts per second, meaning higher frame rate. We, we have questions from customers who really need this kind of uh, bandwidth today. And the frame rate means uh, lighting that has to, to follow. Frankly, I'm not specialist in lighting, but, but I would say that it's not, not a problem to have lighting system uh, at this, uh, this frame rate. Right. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, the hour is up. So I think with that, I shall bring the webs. Um, just to say it will remain live on our website, that's www.imveurope.com and it will be there for the next 12 months. So you can go back and listen to all the four speaker presentations again if you so wish. So it leads me to thank our speakers, Patrick, Mark, Jack and Wynne, and also our sponsors, Eurasys, Scorpion Vision and Optronis. And thank you all for listening. Um, have a good day. Goodbye. <laughs>